Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about green rocket fuels. So let's dive right into it. Now, first thing you have to understand what we are talking about. We are talking about small thrusters. We are not talking about main engines because main engines are uh, more or less clean. Because let's say, for example, space shuttle, the main engine used hydrogen and oxygen. So output was water. So basically it was clean. So, but we are talking about small thrusters. So basically think of big rocket engines as swords and small thruster engines as scapel. It's precision. So they are generally low power. Now, when I say low power, do understand it's comparatively speaking because uh, the thrusters that are used in basically space shuttle is much more powerful than used in uh, dragon capsule so compared to the main rocket you will always have lower power then it must be controlled by now this is a critical aspect when you are talking about solid rocket motors they are very powerful like the in terms of thrust they are like they're badass but in terms of controllability they are useless because you can't do anything with them and in terms of liquid fuel you might say okay the, in that i can control it. yes you can but not too much like uh, in terms of even uh, falcon 9's uh, basically amazing engines they also have limits they cannot throttle from like let's say three percent to one hundred percent they barely have like you know hundred percent to seventy percent that's their throttle range thirty percent of throttle range so you don't have too much control however when you are talking about thrusters you must have control and i mean everywhere like you must have like okay my thrusters can provide five newtons to 50 newtons like you must have a range or in some scenarios where you cannot have range you will have a arrangement basically you will have three thrusters so let's say each one is uh, 10 newton so you're like oh you need 10 newton you will only fire one you need uh, 20 newton you will fire two you will need 30 newtons you will fire three so it has to be controllable everything about it is designed for control now it's also long term that's why cryogenic fuels cannot be used you cannot use liquid hydrogen or liquid oxygen now there have been some improvement in terms of insulation in terms of uh, other things uh, surrounding the system but we're still not in a place where we can say okay you're gonna put liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen here in the tank and it's gonna stay in, in liquid form for like let's say two months or three months it does not work that way so flat out it has to be something that can be stored for very long term and bare minimum time is uh, basically uh, when we're talking about is we are talking about around six months for ISS and when we are talking about deep space mission basically you're going to Jupiter or Saturn uh, you, you are talking about minimum 10 to 25 years so it must be long term storable and it must be restartable because liquid engines uh, while you can have a third party system where you can ignite it but um, this generally must be restartable in a simplicity sense so generally people use what we classify as hypergolic fuel you can check my video about that here now the restartable makes it very more uh, much more elegant it's not like you're, you fire the main engine you go where you have to go and if you missed it you missed it this is much more precise much more controllable so we are talking about small thrusters these are the thrusters used for apollo mission so then why do we need that if we already have a big giant rocket and it has gimbling function and it has small uh, basically it has gimbal it has uh, you know throttle capability why do we need this well precision control it's the same come uh, you know it comes down to the same factor basically sword versus a scapel you need both of them so in terms of orbital adjustment you have to know orbits are very finicky when you are talking about like we understand orbit in terms of like we send something it will remain in the orbit but the orbits are never circular they are rarely an exact alignment that you want it so we always have to correct it just a little bit nudge it do this do that circularize the orbit so they are not very uh, you know friendly things so we have to have something that can like you know keep nudging it to make sure that it remains as it's supposed to do then we are talking about deorbiting bar now deorbiting is compulsory uh, when you are talking about low earth orbits and uh, there is other version of uh, deorbiting where is your graveyard burn so basically if you have geostationary uh, because geostationary has like 30000 uh, kilometer higher uh, so falling down you you're gonna hit many satellites that's why people generally do they add uh, like five to six kilometer uh, delta extra on the uh, satellite and then they put it into graveyard orbit which is higher than uh, geostationary so you sometimes you can do geo uh, deorbit burn sometimes you can do graveyard burn and you also need course correction because nowadays there is a lot of serious risk about space collisions uh, many military satellites have multiple thrusters to make sure they can like dodge basically big chunks at least not small chunks but big chunks let's say a spent stage from saturn era is still floating around if that comes around the satellite can dodge it but again it has to realign itself otherwise the orbit plane would be like completely tilted so we need it and like you can't deorbit something uh, like SpaceX without uh, you know having precision thrusters because even if you have let's say big rocket engine that can slow down the speed if you don't align it properly you could have a scenario where heat shield is not facing the right direction so this is why it is a compulsory in space organization or any kind of space vehicle 
so what is our current issue we must been doing it otherwise we won't be talking about it here current option is way too expensive way too dangerous and these two are intertwined right now we uh, mostly utilize hydrazine now problem with hydrazine is hydrazine is basically it does work there is no denying it that's why we are using it but it is dangerous beyond belief basically it can ignite it can give you cancer and it can burn your skin and it can kill you and it can do extra other harms so you have to understand even though let's say a barrel of hydrazine inherently is not that expensive but the people needed to handle this thing adds up the cost so basically per person let's say instead of having a person that is working on minimum wage you need a person that is like equipped with this, almost like a space suit these things are designed with internal air system basically they have their own oxygen supply because breathing it will give you cancer so these things add up the cost so you go from let's say this is $100 a liter to like $50,000 a liter and this also adds uh, another complexity basically let's say a college student built a two uh, six u satellite basically 10 centimeter by 20 centimeter by 30 centimeter satellite it has enough space for small thruster nothing too big but it has space for small thruster he may have be more than good enough to build it but he does not get qualification to fuel it with hydrazine you have to do it in a clean environment you have to do it with an inspection environment like it's not like refueling your uh, truck car or something like that it's very complex and dangerous because these things are dangerous on a level that is very hard to convey it's like if you are pouring the petrol and like petrol like okay i will kill you now okay i'll give you cancer now so you have to understand and if it fails let's say satellite blows up then there has to be a special crew assigned like in every rocket launch where uh, hydrogen is used there is a crew on guard like if it blows up they will neutralize it using chemical agents so you have to understand this is very problematic that's why whenever space shuttle lo uh, landed uh, nobody was allowed to go near it unless these type of people cleaned the like basically made it human safe otherwise like you will be dead around it not inside the shuttle but outside the because there would be fumes of this so this is very problematic so then we come to our green option the whole topic of this video now you have to understand whenever somebody is talking about green option green propellant and all that they are not talking about exactly this they are talking about a concept now concept is basically it must be safe to handle it would be like same more or less like petrol and diesel because hydrazine also has this one issue let's say even if you are completely uh, like sealed up like you have complete good suit if you open the let's say container it will absorb moisture from the atmosphere and become diluted so that's also a problem these things on the other hand must be human safe basically you can give it to a child and of course as long as you don't drink it you're supposed to be safe basically if it falls on your skin it should not kill you it like you know it exposes to oxygen in the air it should not automatically go kaboom so this is the whole target of it this is the target basically college student can be like okay here's i'm pouring the fuel nothing fancy about it that's the end goal that is what we call green fuel and byproducts, whatever you get after you burn the engine, must be safe too. It cannot be like, okay, it is safe as long as you don't burn it. Once you burn it, you get cancer. It should be safe to burn also. And controllability aspect. This aspect simply means uh, there are multiple factors that must go on in order to trigger it. You cannot be like, uh, hypergolics are very good, but uh, they are very uh, active agents. Basically, you mix them, no matter what the temperature is, no matter what else there is, it detonates. Many monopropellants are almost ready to detonate. You have to be like, okay, okay, uh, you, you are sure you're gonna launch it and just fire it so you want controllability basically it must be multiple steps to do to ignite it it cannot be like go boom you want controllability aspect onto this so our solution is basically hydro ammonia nitrate again it's a very fancy name i can't even pronunciate it and uh, they're very fun, uh, funny chemical formula about is nh3 ono 3 Yes, it has ONO in its designation and if you want uh, like absolute atom version would be H4N2O4. So you have to understand it has a lot of oxygen which are uh, weakly binded, it has a lot of hydrogen which is weakly binded. So little bit of push and voila, you have rocket fuel. However, it is not stable. So whenever somebody is talking about this and I'm like I'm already talking about making it stable then why the heck people are talking about this. This is basically like RDX. So if you are familiar with explosives you must understand RDX is the most powerful explosive we have like of course other uh, provided some other military contract RDX is general purpose explosive but it's way too reactive basically you drop it it goes kaboom. So what military does is generally take the RDX mix it with polymer and they make it plastic plastic explosive or C4 that's what it is basically 25% polymer mixed into the RDX to make it stable and RDX uh, after it becomes C4 it's so stable that you set it on fire it will not blow up you have to use blast cord to detonate it or blast caps so this is the same 
this itself is not very stable it is stable otherwise it simply won't exist it is stable but it's not very stable so we add things to it we add uh, multiple things now this is the cr critical aspect you must understand there are many companies who are developing this field so they all will say they are using this but you must understand there are also adding things now that adding things adds uh, certain properties like for example there are multiple mix about it nasa's mixture is called afm315e now this mixture has the benefit that it requires a hot catalyst they wanted the system in a such a way that it has fails in controllability aspect basically it will decompose once it's exposed to a metal basically generally it's supposed to be exposed to either platinum or silver pure so that's generally how it works but because of the additive they added to it uh, it became stable enough in a point where you can be like okay it's only gonna detonate if you heat it up basically the metal they have they're supposed to heat it up to 200 degrees celsius now you might be like isn't that extra step yes and no now uh, extra step because heating something is very easy we know how to do it and you only have to heat it once now this also gives you extra fail safe let's say you heated the rocket you fired the engine and like you got the satellite then you cut off the system electrical system is cut off but the valve did not close properly now over time it will uh, of course leak now here's the deal once the catalyst has cooled down it will not ignite again that is why people, nasa wanted this so again japanese agency they, they are going about it a bit different their fuel is more focused on something else and this fuel in principle that is why we are testing it in principle also is freeze friendly basically you can freeze it the ben benefit of that would be basically you don't have to insulate the tank you will just put heaters so let's say you are doing very long term mission you are going to pluto for 10 years uh, you can simply have iron engines that is gi giving you the main thrust and once you reach there because iron engine does not have enough thrust you can thaw the fuel out it won't uh, be basically expanding and contracting too much to destroy it so that is also a good thing that way we can very uh, you know safely keep this kind of fuel for 25 years that's their end goal for 25 years they should keep working that's the whole point and because it needs hot catalyst you don't have the scenario of like oops like some uh, contamination happens oops that oops should not happen this is the whole idea of green option people like school students should be able to handle of course you're supposed to still wear a mask so you are not sneezing into it but you get the point so because of the importance of this uh, kind of fuel this kind of magic uh, magical thing way too many players are doing it like japan just in early 2019 they already launched it there, there is already in space it's already doing demonstration then you're talking about nasa mission which is soon will be launched using falcon heavy then you're talking about rocket lab they are also making their own mix and that has already been launched so you have to understand everybody is going at it because this is a next level evolution because okay we can't do much about our main engines because of the how physics works and how specific impulse works we can't do much with it like if somebody says like i can find something that is more energy dense than uh, let's say hydrogen and oxygen mix either they are lying or they are talking about nuclear so you have to understand we can't do much like you can do methane but again methane does give you a bit of thrust but it does compromise your specific impulse so we reached the point we in terms of main rocket engine we know what we can do however in this there is still room for improvement so from uh, nasa jaxa to isro to esa to rus cosmonaut everybody every tom dick and harry dealing with space is working on this because if this works out if they finally figured out how to manufacture it how to use it in space because of course in, in lab tested is already worked out but in space when we are talking about it's completely different volume so that is why nasa is doing the you know uh, demonstration mission jaxa is doing demonstration they have already done it so if this works out it can change the whole landscape so we will go from having let's say docking systems that are docked to international space station for six months to a year or maybe even 25 years let's say it that means you can literally have a uh, you know escape craft that is just put there and you don't have to worry about it. you don't have to cycle this you know spacecraft hey it's a reaching six month expiry period so fuel will start to corrode the tank that won't happen and if you can freeze it properly so that also gives you much more uh, peace of mind that it won't uh, slouch around and change the center of gravity so there are a lot of people a lot of money being poured into this so in next two to three years we'll have a lot of interesting results so this was my presentation on green propellants i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it don't worry about it you can press dislike i would urge you to press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them and check out my other videos there are like 200s of them and subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching